Hello friends, my name is Mayank Divedi. Today we are going to start a new lecture on Vedic age. In this lecture we are going to cover early Vedic age and later Vedic age as a whole. This lecture is going to be in several parts. So let's start with the first part. In this part, in this part we are going to talk about the basics of Vedic age, the Rig Vedic age and the later Vedic age. Then we are going to talk about Vedic literature. After that, we are going to talk about the political life during early Vedic age and the later Vedic age. So let's start. So the time period for Vedic age is between 1500 BC to 500 BC. The Harappan civilization was followed by another great civilization or a culture known as Vedic age or Vedic culture. The Vedic texts are primary source of reconstruction of Vedic culture or Vedic age. Archaeological materials have also supplemented the texts, though not comprehensively. The Vedic texts are believed to compose by Indo-Aryans and Indo-Aryans refers to the speaker of Indo-Iranian branch of Indo-European family of languages. Rig Veda composers describe themselves as Arya. Basically the R word means kinship. So we can divide Vedic age in two parts. First is early Vedic age, second is later Vedic age. The early Vedic age was between 1500 BC to 1000 BC and the later Vedic age was between 1000 BC to 500 BC. Let's talk about the origin theories, the theories of origin of Aryans. First theory, Central Asian theory. The Central Asian theory was given by Max Müller who was a German scholar. He basically told that Aryans originally lived in Central Asia and the reason he gave that he did the comprehensive study of Iranian texts which is Avesta and Vedas and there is a language similarity between them. For example, Hindu, Sindhu, Ahura, Asura, Homa, Soma, Daha, Das. So this was a theory given by Max Miller, Central Asian theory. Next one, European theory which was given by William Jones, Giles, Schroeder and Morgan. According to this theory, Aryans inhabited Europe and the one branch of their offshoot came towards India. The reason behind that was the resemblance between Sanskrit and European language. For example, the Sanskrit words Matri, Pitre, Latin word, Mater, Pater. Then the next theory, Arctic theory. Arctic theory was given by Bal Gangadhar Tilak. The reason behind that was because there is a part in Rig Veda in which the origin place of Aryans was described as a place where six month long day and six month long night. Then the next theory. Tibetan theory which was given by Swami Dayanand Saraswati and he also took the reference from Vedas and other Aryan texts. The next theory which was Indian theory. The Indian theory which was given by Dr. A.C. Das, Kangana Jha and L.D. Kala and N.D.S. Trivedi. According to this theory, the resident of Sapta Sindhu which is an Indus river region reaching up to Saraswati river, those people came as migrant and the earliest Indo-Aryan lived in a geographical area covered by eastern Afghanistan, Punjab and the fringes of Western Uttar Pradesh and if Aryan had come from outside their language literature basically Vedas should have been found there too and no Vedic literature have been found outside of India. So let's talk about Vedic civilization as earlier we have divided Vedic civilization in two parts early Vedic age which is the Rig Vedic age and second which is a later Vedic age. The early Vedic age which was between 1500 BC to 1000 BC and it is described in Rig Veda in Mandal 2 to 7 and the famous poets of the early Vedic age were Atre, Vasist, Vishwamitra, Bharadwaj and Gritsamada. Then the later Vedic age which was between 1000 BC to 500 BC which is described in Rig Vedic Mandala 1, 8, 9 and 10. Other than that the literature of Samveda, Yajurveda, Arthaveda, Brahmana, Aryanka, Upanishadas, Vedanta, Vedanga, Puranas and Dharmashastra. Let's talk about Rig Veda. So, Abhi mene bula mandalas. Mandal. Mandal 2 to 7 were composed in Rig Vedic period which is early Vedic period and it is the oldest part of Rig Vedic Samhita and are called family book as they are ascribed to particular families of Rishis and in Mandala 1 which is primarily dedicated to Indra and Agni Varuna, Surya, Mitra, Rudra and Vishnu are also mentioned in Mandala 1. Mandala 1, Mandala 8, Mandala 9 and Mandala 10 are composed in later Vedic period. Mandala 8 in this Mandala the hymns are dedicated to various gods and have been mostly composed by Kanva clan. Mandala 9, all hymns are dedicated entirely to Soma. Soma is king of gods or god of plants, basically a special god to Brahmanas. It is found in Munjavat which is Himalaya. It is a source of Soma plant. Then Mandala 10, it contains Nadi, Stuti Sukta which is 
praising of rivers and also contains nashadiya and purushukta in case of rigveda the sakal shakha is a recension of rigveda and ayurveda is upveda of rigveda second shamveda shamveda basically vedas of chants it is a collection of words drawn almost wholly from rigveda and that are provided with musical notations and are intended as an aid to performance of sacred songs drupad rag it is also in which was sang by dance in in medieval times and gandharva veda is upaveda of samveda next yajurveda deals with the procedure for the performance of sacrifices and shukla yajurveda and krishna yajurveda are two recension of it dhanurveda is upaveda of yajurveda atharva veda shilpa veda is upaveda of atharva veda it deals with magical spells to ward off evil spirits and dangers next brahmanas the brahmanas consists of details about meaning of vedic hymns and the application and origin of stories Every Veda has several Brahmanas attached to it. Kaushitaki Brahmanas, which are associated with Rig Veda, Jaiminiya Brahmanas, which is associated with Sama Veda, and Satpata Brahmanas, which is associated with Yajur Veda, and Gopat Brahmanas, which are associated with Atharva Veda. Next, Aranyakas. Aranyakas basically are forest books. They are written chiefly by hermits residing in forests for their students. They lay emphasis not on sacrifices but on meditation. They are in fact opposed to the sacrifices and many of the early rituals. Upanishads. The literal meaning of Upanishad it is to sit near someone. There are 108 Upanishads of which 13 are most prominent. It introduces the concept of Atman and Brahm or Brahman. Atman means soul. Brahm means absolute being. Vedanta it reveals the aim final aim of Vedas and signifies the end of Vedas it condemns sacrifices ceremonies and denotes the last phase of vedic period then vedangana vedangana means limbs of veda they perform various supportive and argumentative function in study preservation and protection of vedas and vedic traditions there are six vedangnas shiksha kal jyotish vyakaran nirukta basically it means the study of history of words chanda metric Kalpa or Kalp Sutra, which is divided into three parts for the Shauta Sutra, Kriya Sutra, and Dharma Sutra. Then Puranas, literally it means ancient or old. Traditionally, Puranas are considered to be composed by Veda Vyas. There are five subjects of Puranas: Sarga, Prati Sarga, Manavantara, Vamsa, Vamsanu, Charitra. I will talk about them in detail when we are discussing about political structure of Vedic civilization. So this was basics of Vedic civilization or Vedic age. So this was just the basics of Vedic age. Let's get into some serious parts. Let's talk about the political life during early Vedic age. So, the information found in Rig Vedic Samhita throw a light on nature and character of institutions and practices of political administrative life during early Vedic age. The early Vedic polity was tribal in nature because Vedic Aryans were living in small tribal groups. The tribal chief were responsible for political administrative matters, and the concept of state was absent during early Vedic age. because aryan were living a nomadic life as a result of which a definite territorial identity was absent the democratic elements were present in political life during early vedic age the rigvedic samhita contains reference of a number of popular assemblies such as sabha samiti vidha parishad and gana the sabha sabha was assembly of brahmanas and elders and samiti samiti was assembly of commoners in both sabha and samiti women are allowed to participate during rig vedic period vidat was responsible for distributing war booty among members of tribe parishad parishad was like a legislative body where where common issues were discussed and gana gana was highest advisory body to king or chief so from case of sabha and samiti we can say the early vedic polity was liberal and progressive and rigid political restrictions were absent people enjoyed high degree of freedom in their public and private life so polity the polity of early vedic period was egalitarian because in character political status of members of tribe were equal there were hardly any difference in political status of common and the political functionaries like gramins vishpati and raja etc the family was primary unit of political life it was known as kul or kunba the head of family represented the member of family in political act the number of families together constituted a grama or gramani and gramani was the head of the grama he was the political functionary and a number of grama together constituted a vis and vishpati was its head and jana jana was the highest political unit which was headed by janesha or gopa he was equivalent to king 
the political system was monarchical in nature because the king was the head of entire political system and republican polity was known during vedic age but monarchy was more common in the beginning the king was elected by samiti but later office of king became hereditary the power and prestige of crown were not high because king was just a leader of tribe his main responsibility was to lead tribe during offensive and defensive battles the other functions of the state were yet to be emerged and the bureaucracy let's talk about bureaucracy bureaucracy was in its early state because only three officials were mentioned in rigvedic samhita which are purohita senani and gramini let's talk about political life in india during later vedic age or later vedic period the reference found in later vedic literature throw a light on political life of india during later vedic age the tribal character of polity got diminished to some extent because the amalgamation of tribes and population growth as a result of these factors the size of groups living together as a tribe had in- and the attributes identified with particular tribes were no longer dominant the concept of state was emerged during later vedic age because aryans started living a sedentary life as a result of this definite territorial identity was developed democratic elements the democratic elements were still present in political life of later vedic age sabha samiti enjoyed great place of significance in arthaveda sabha and samiti was mentioned as a twin daughters of prajapati and women were not allowed to participate in the meetings of sabha and samiti anymore this indicates the democratic character of polity had got reduced to some extent when compared to early vedic period or early vedic age still there was no system of codified law the judicial legal system was was in its infancy the crimes like cattle lifting theft are mentioned in rigvedic samhita the king was highest court of justice the issues were decided by him by keeping customs and traditions in mind armies no regular standing army the war and battles were quite frequent dur- during vedic age though cattle lifting was most common cause of conflict at that time some alliances were formed and counter alliances were formed an alliance of 10 kings was defeated by king sudasa of bharata tribe on the bank of river ravi and vishwamitra which is a parushini it is mentioned at rigveda there was no regular standing army during vedic age the adult male members of village used to participate in war and battles under the leadership of gramini the taxation system was also in nascent stage of development bali is mentioned as tax in rigveda samhita but in reality it was a voluntary by the members of a tribe to the king because there was no one to collect it and a regular system of taxation was yet to be emerged political life political life was liberal and progressive the rigid political restrictions were absent the people enjoyed high degree of freedom and in their public and private life political system was still largely egalitarian though it had evolved significantly when compared with early vedic age crown king a janpada rashtra emerged as highest political unit in later vedic age although other units were still there the power and prestige of crown increased significantly in later vedic age the number of rituals and ceremonies developed in context of office of king these ceremonies like rajasuya yagya aswamedha yagya aswamedha sacrifice or vajapaya sacrifice greatly enhanced the power and prestige of crown rajasuya sacrifice was performed at times coronation of king vajapaya sacrifice was performed to increase the strength of king aswamedha sacrifice was performed for territorial expansion the concept of divine monarchy emerged during later vedic age in arthaveda king parikshit is mentioned as ardhadeva king is started assuming high sounding titles as such as ekrat solo monarch or sarvabhumi lord of whole earth some titles were direction specific because king of east assumed the title of samrat king of west swarat king of north adopted the title of virat king of middle earth central country raja king in south bhoja so kings were maintaining elaborate codes during later vedic age in which the senior officials and other functionaries was used to participate let's talk about bureaucracy bureaucracy evolved quite significantly during later vedic age because 16 officials are mentioned in later vedic literature the prominent among them were senani purohit yuvraj akshavapa who was king's companion in game of dice rakshin which is a police chief and palagal which is a ambassador of king judicial system judicial legal system and military system were same as early vedic age king was the highest judiciary body and he led military expeditions war and battles 
were still quite frequent, but their character had changed. Wars were no longer fought for cattle lifting. Territorial expansion was main cause for the wars. So military system, which is imperialistic military system, imperialistic outlook emerged for the first time during the later Vedic age, as a result of which the territorial expansion of Janas of early Vedic age got transformed into Janpadas. And the taxation system also evolved during the later Vedic age. Bali became a regular tax and it was collected by Bali Sadak. Bhaga, which was a king's share in agriculture produce, and a bhoga, which was ceremonial gift. Bhoga, which was ceremonial gift, was other tax which was collected by king from the people. So that's it for today, guys. In next lecture, we are going to talk about the economic life of Vedic age, the early Vedic age, and the later Vedic age. Then we are going to talk about the social life of early Vedic age and the later Vedic age. And we will discuss the status of women during early Vedic age and later Vedic period. Then we are going to discuss the education system during early Vedic age and the later Vedic age. And at last, we are going to discuss about the religious life during Vedic age. So this is it from my side. See you in next lecture. Thank you. Mayang Devedi signing off.